good morning. I am Dr. Ricardo Carrillo Mesa, medical graduate from the Autonomous University of Baja California at Mexico, and I'm presenting Caracil. Uh, Caracil means uh, cerebral autosomal dominant arteriopathy with subcortical infarcts and leukoencephalopathy. Uh, this disease is the most common monogenic cause of adult onset progressive cerebrovascular disease. It affects approximately uh, two to five of 10,000 people. Uh, this term is uh, kind of recent. It is coined in the 1993 by Bowser, yet as early as the 70s, uh, families who present with an unusual uh, clinical presentation of cerebral small vessel disease were described in the literature. Uh, the cause of this disease is a mutation in NOTS3 gene on the chromosome 19. It is characterized by a small vessel failure in the brain and cognitive impairment. Uh, we will talk a little bit about NOTS3. NOTS3 protein and gene, uh, the gene encodes for a single pass transmembrane receptor that is expressed on vascular smooth muscle cells, uh, which act as a signaling receptor to control cell fate in many developmental and adult tissue contexts. Uh, within its developmental roles during vascular development, uh, NOTS3 regulates that endothelial precursor cells uh, differentiate and form tubular networks, and uh, during angiogenesis, these networks undergo sprouting and vessels are stabilized by mural cells, uh, which will differentiate vascular smart muscle cells, uh, playing an important role because nut tree promotes proliferation and protects against vascular smart muscle cells apoptosis. Uh, below, we can see on image A the relationship between different cell types that comprise the blood vessels, and on image B, the different layers of the vessel wall. As with other notch proteins, uh, there are total uh, four notch proteins. We are talking only about notch three. Uh, notch three continues to function in various capacities in the adult organism. Its role in neuronal stem cells and neuronal differentiation implies uh, maintenance of quescent stem cells by suppressing their proliferation and regulating adult hippocampal neurogenesis. In adult mice, uh, NOTS3 is expressed on neural stem and progenitor cells in the subgranular zone of the hippocampus and uh, the subependymal zone of the lateral ventricles. On the first series of images, uh, we have the subgranular hippocampal zone, uh, which main function is to carry out uh, hippocampal neurogenesis. On A, uh, you can see that this zone extends from the border of the hippocampal dentate gyrus and the ileus. And on B and C, you can see cells from this region on different stages of neurogenesis. And on the image from the left, uh, we have the other zone, the subependymal zone, uh, which is an important stem cell niche in the adult mammalian brain. Uh, this zone contains active and quescent stem cells. Uh, notch one is preferentially expressed in the active stem cells, while notch three is preferentially uh, expressed in the quescent cells. And although detail analysis in human cells and tissues is still lacking, uh, this already suggests that, that notch three might exert uh, regulatory influences on neuronal plasticity. Uh, notch 3 is important also uh, for having a healthy vascular function, maintaining vessels and blood brain barrier. And there is evidence for supporting the role of Notch 3 in mediating uh, mechanotransduction. Mechanotransduction refers to, the, to all the processes through which cells sense and respond to mechanical stimuli by converting them to biochemical signals and 
that elicit uh, a lot of a specific cellular responses. Uh, for example, when vascular smooth muscle cells are in contractile condition, they regulate vascular tone. But in adaption to mechanical inputs, these cells can switch morphology to a synthetic phenotype and contribute to vascular growth and remodeling. And there are other functions that nut tree has as regulating satellite cells, which are stem cells involved in skeletal muscle repair. And also uh, nut tree has roles in esophageal homeostasis, promoting esophageal scammo cells differentiation. Uh, now, uh, considering the important role of notch signaling in vascular development and homeostasis, it is logical that this functional notch signaling has been observed in a uh, number of many vascular diseases. On the left, uh, we have diseases linked to mut mutations or aberrant regulation of notch tree. And on the right, uh, the linked ones to other genes in the notch signaling pathway. Uh, we can see that not that notch tree is involved also in pulmonary arterial hypertension, childhood primary hypertension, patients with cerebral small vessel disease and white matter lesions. While the general notch signaling pathway is involved in cerebral cavernous malformations, neural tissue and mangioblastoma, thoracic aortic aneurysms arteriovenous malformations, glomus tumors, and other diseases like the multi-organ diseases with vascular problems as allergial syndrome and adams oliver syndrome. Uh, the role that plays nut tree on Kerasil is uh, this one, that mutations of this protein cause an accumulation of its extracellular domain uh, causing its segregation around vascular smooth muscle cells and parasites of brain arteries and capillaries. On image A, uh, a small artery from white matter is immunostained uh, with an antibody raised against the extracellular domain of notch tree. Uh, we can appreciate that uh, the vessel wall is thick. Uh, we can see the generation of smooth muscle cells and of notch tree uh, that are pointed by the arrows. On image B, the arrows are pointing to many deposits of granular non-amyloid osmophilic material uh, that are characteristic of this disease. About its clinical presentation, all larger studies have demonstrated uh, that brain ischemia is the most frequent symptom in Ketacil. It occurs uh, between 50-65% uh, up to 85%. Uh, being symptoms of focal brain ischemia, the most common complaint on other core studies, around 28 to 44% of patients have been diagnosed with cognitive impairment, uh, being domains of most significant vulnerability. Uh, the ones of executive function, attention, memory, language, and visuospatial visu function. In addition, a uh, higher incidence of up to 40% of migraine with visual aura has been reported in Caracil patients compared uh, to the general population. And uh, ne neuropsychiatric manifestations of Caracil include depression, apathy, and anxiety. Uh, being depression found in around 20 to 30% of the patients and apathy in 41% of them. And similar to other vasculopathies, uh, the velocity of deterioration in progression to dementia is variable. Uh, sometimes, the majority of times, it has been found that 85% of patients did not show a significant worsening in a two-year prospective study after the diagnosis, but there's a small percentage, less than 5% of the patients that worsen dramatically in the same period of time. Uh, following with the progression of the symptoms in Caracil, uh, the pace of cognitive dysfunction is progressive and it can extend over 
actually. And of the previously mentioned cognitive domains, aphasia and memory deficits are uncommon until late in the disorder. And as the disease progresses, patients exhibit diffuse spasticity, uh, dysartria, dysphagia, emotional incontinence, gait abnormalities, and global cognitive disability. On the left, uh, we can see the natural history of the main clinical manifestations of Caracil uh, being migraine with aura present early in life. Uh, because migraine with aura is common in general population, uh, the symptom by itself is generally not helpful in establishing a diagnosis, even though it is a common symptom that occurs early in life in patients with Caracil. Uh, when this uh, migraine with aura is present is usually the first symptom uh, with an average age of onset of 30 years. As mentioned before, uh, ischemic strokes are really frequent, including also TIAs, transient ischemic stroke attacks. Uh, these events, as you can see on the image, occur at a mean age of 49 years in most of the cases in the absence of conventional vascular risk factors. Something that characterizes people with Caracil is that the majority of them uh, don't present with cardiovascular risk factors. Uh, the, the percentage of people that, percent, that present with this uh, increased risk factors is around 20%. Uh, then uh, we have mood disturbances and apathy that generally are present as severe depressive disorders that sometimes alternate with maniac episodes that could be mistaken uh, for bipolar mood disorder until uh, the typical catacyl abnormalities are seen on MRI. Apathy uh, will be characterized by absence of motivation that is associated with decreased voluntary behavior and is considered as a major clinical manifestation of Caracil. Uh, by last, uh, cognitive impairment is the second most uh, frequent manifestation, being the early sign in most of the cases of impairment in these cognitive domains, and is characterized by executive function and processing of speed in a more slowly manner. Uh, cognitive decline will become more extensive with aging. As you can see, it progresses through, through time. It will worsen with the recurrent stroke. And in the years preceding death, uh, dementia is invariably associated with motor impairment, gait disturbances, and later, uh, so the vulvar palsy. Finally, on the bottom, we have T2 white matter abnormalities that increase progressively and becomes constant by around 35 years in all patients. The exact age at uh, the early sunset is uncertain. That's why the dotted line. But basically after the 35 years of age, all patients uh, present with this type of abnormalities that we'll, we'll see soon. Uh, on a retrospective study that includes uh, 411 patients uh, with the data from the patients who had passed away, life expectancy was reported to be reduced only by five years uh, for men and uh, between two to two years in women. Uh, but if we look to table four, uh, we can see what the clinical status at onset of the cause of death was being frequent for the majority of patients, over the 70%, uh, to present spastic tetra or hemiparesis, dementia, dysartria, dysphagia, urinary and fecal incontinence. And on table five, we can see what the primary causes of death were in 50 patients that information could be verified. Uh, being the most common cause, uh, pneumonia, by 36% if we consider pneumonia and, aspir and aspiration pneumonia as the same. And is followed by a sudden unexpected death with a 25%. The diagnosis of Caracil uh, requires uh, radiologic and clinical correlation 
also the severity and timing of symptom onset varies in Catacil. It is a highly penetrant disease with a clinical and radiologic manifestations that present in the vast majority of patients uh, by late middle age, by late 35 years, uh, they will be present with these characteristics that we will see. Uh, the best study to the best imaging study to study Catacil will be MRI, but uh, we need to be aware of what manifestations will be seen in a CT scan. On computer tomography in early stages of catacil, uh, non-specific periventricular and other subcortical white matter hypodensities may be seen. And the characteristic white matter disease will not be evident on computer tomography until more advanced stages of the disease. Uh, we can see on the first image, on image A, periventricular and subinsular white matter hypodensities. On B, uh, bilateral anterior temporal pole subcortical hypodensities that are better uh, seen on the coronal B on the third image on C. Uh, these ones are from the same patient. And now uh, we will study MRI. Uh, brain magnetic resonance is the most clinically relevant imaging modality in Catacil. In the early stages, uh, it will be similar to the CT scan. Uh, we will see nonspecific periventricular and other subcortical hyperintensities, uh, xenon flare, and that may be indistinct from changes related to other small vessel diseases. However, on advanced stages, the typical presentation are confluent white matter flare changes. Uh, we can see them on A and B images. Uh, we can see that there is abundant white matter and periventricular white matter disease. And on C, uh, we can appreciate involvement of the external capsule. And on images D and E, uh, we can see confluent anterior temporal pole white matter involvement. And on F, uh, subcortical microbleed is seen as a punctate uh, rounded hypointensity on fast field eco sequence. Uh, continuing with microbleeds, on A, uh, we can see a small hypointense uh, foci on the brainstem. And on B, these microbleeds are in the thalamus. On Cadacil, we can also see uh, these lacunar infarcts. Uh, here we can see lacunar infarcts on image A in the pons, on B in the thalamus, and on C in the lentiform nuclei. Uh, the last lesion I want to show you is this one. Uh, here we can see multiple high pointance uh, lesions at the cortico subcortical junction uh, that are lacunes related to dilated perivascular spaces. Uh, these lesions are the most specific features seen in Catacil. They are present in about 67% of the patients and are associated with the white matter hyperintensities we saw previously on the anterior temporal lobes. And now uh, we will review two Catacil diagnostic criteria because this disease is not so prevalent. Uh, we don't count with many diagnostic criteria. The first one that is the most used is the uh, Davos Catastil criteria from 1998. It has a sensitivity of 52% and a specificity of 66%. It is very simple to use. If you see it catalogs the diagnosis as probable or possible, and it excludes effectively the diagnosis if the patient has a presentation we already know is not compatible with Catacil, uh, sunset above 70 years, severe vascular risk factors, or a normal MRI of white matter after age 35. On 2017, uh, this criterion was published. Uh, their authors named it uh, the new diagnostic criteria for Catacil in Japan. Uh, area was validated in Japanese population only. It has a sensitivity of 97.1%, but 
but a specificity of only 7.5%. It is highly sensitive, but poorly specific, as you can see. Uh, more than a scale, uh, this works as a summary of how can Catacil can be diagnosed. It also catalogs clinically uh, the diagnosis as probable or possible. Uh, but I want to, but what I want to highlight here is that uh, how the definite diagnosis is made. Uh, the patient must fulfill white matter lesions on imaging. Uh, that his leukodystrophy is not explained by other diseases. And the genetic criteria, which is the gold standard, or the pathological criteria, uh, which both uh, can be assessed by a skin biopsy. And now uh, we will discuss about treatment. Unfortunately, to date, there is no treatment of proven efficacy for Cadacil. Uh, current treatments consist only on targeting cardiovascular risk reduction. Uh, blood pressure has been identified as a negative prognostic marker for a stroke onset. Uh, if you have a hypertension, you are more probably to suffer from a stroke early in life. Smoking uh, has been associated with poor outcome and patients may benefit from statins and anti therapy. Uh, regarding migraine with aura treatment, uh, the management is similar to the one of general population with the exception that beta blockers uh, should be avoided for migraine prophylaxis in these patients because it seems to demonstrate uh, that the use of uh, prophylaxis with beta blockers, specifically propanolol, uh, conduces to worse outcomes. Also, uh, depression treatment is similar to the one of the general population. By last, I want to show you the Catacil Association and Catacil Foundation, uh, mentioning on each a uh, helpful resource for patients and or physicians. Uh, this one here is the Catacil Association, a nonprofit organization named uh, Cure Catacil. If we scroll down in this web page, uh, we will find this menu. And from this option, uh, let's click, let's click uh, on find a provider. If we click on find a provider, uh, this map will show up, uh, <laughs> providing you with a list that features clinicians based in the US. Uh, with information provided by community members. And as you can see on the list, uh, there are options for, for more than five patients. Uh, one example is the University of Washington Medical Center. And this one here is the Catacil Foundation. Uh, this one is a nonprofit organization too. Its name is Catacil Together We Have Hope. Uh, that unfortunately uh, has discontinued operations after 60, 16 years of work, uh, but the web page still works. And a great resource that offers is that provides you with information about testing sites in the US and all over the globe. Uh, here, uh, we can see an option in the US. Uh, the option is Athena uh, Diagnostics. And also uh, provides information from the other countries previously shown. Uh, these ones are my references. And finally, I want to thank you for your attention and your time.